Welcome to our Sunday, August 23rd, 2020 worship service for the One God, One Thought Center for Better Living in Baltimore, Maryland. Our senior minister is the Reverend Burnett Lee Jones, and my name is Constance Mann Leonard, UFBL teacher for One God, One Thought. Let us take a moment to become still, turning within and recognizing the only presence and the only power in the universe, God the good omnipotence. Be still and know, be still and trust, be still and expect. My soul waits only for God, for my expectation is from God. Be still. At the One God, One Thought Center for Better Living, we know there is only one presence, one power, and one intelligence in all the universe, and that is God, absolute good omnipotence. We are a member church of the Universal Foundation for Better Living, which is an association of independent, new thought, Bible-based Christian churches and study groups, founded by the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman. Our current president is the Reverend Dr. Sheila McKeithen. Each month here at One God, One Thought, we focus on a spiritual idea that has a disciple and a corresponding color. The idea for August is Will, the disciple is Matthew, and the color is gray. We wear or carry something gray as a reminder that will is the God-given power within you that gives direction to accomplish your goals. To be willing means that we are open and receptive to instruction from within regardless of the appearance. We begin our services here with an opening statement. If you know it with me, Say it along with me. I am one with God. I am one with all people. I am one with all life. I am one God, one thought. And so it is. Amen and amen. Our daily inspiration reading from today comes from Tuesday, August 25th, Daily Inspiration. It is my move. It is my move. I have been standing still for too long. I have to move. No more waiting to exhale. I am moving because it is time to claim what spirit has for me. It is my move because I have a song in my heart that I must sing. I am moving on to my next chapter. I am letting go of the past. I am releasing the pain and shedding what no longer serves me so I can move forward unencumbered. It is my move. Time to do a joy dance. I am ready to be the change I want to see. It is my move because wherever I am, God is. Time to let my God light shine bright. It is my move. I am a wonderful work in progress. My life is not a dress rehearsal. It is a gala performance on the stage of life now. It is my move. I am healing, growing, and changing spiritually and outwardly. It is my move because in the game of life, I am always the star player, the most important person, the MVP, and the undefeated champion. It is my move. I am moving. And scripture says, Jesus said to him, stand up, take your mat and walk. And that is from John 5, 8. So thank you for being with us and thank you for your consciousness. 
Hi, welcome back to the One God, One Thought Center for Better Living. My name is Burnett Jones, Senior Minister here. And today we are continuing our series on Soul Essentials. We have a special, a special lesson today. One that I really love because it comes from our founder, the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman. From her book, It Works If You work it. And so today we're talking about Johnny Coleman Soul Essentials. And we're actually taking a look at the question that she poses in her chapter on prayer. Where is my answer? You know, as a good metaphysician, I know my experience has been, and I'm certain yours as well, that you're always working on something. There's always something that you're working to learn about yourself, about the universal spiritual laws and principles that we teach and learn. It is always something on the table that we are praying about. And Reverend Johnny in her book poses the question, so what's missing that the answer to the prayer is not showing up. Why are we still praying about the same things? So today we have about nine points that she makes in her book, It Works If You Work It. And yes, I'm encouraging you to purchase the book on Amazon and download it on your Kindle so that you can get the full understanding. She's one of the best New Thought teachers I've ever come across. And that's because she keeps it very practical and she breaks things down in a language that we can all understand. For this particular point that she's making, she uses the scripture from James, the fourth chapter. The first through the and third verses read this way in the New International Version. It says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Listen to that now. Desires that are at battle within you. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives very important point and she uses it to dis to begin her conversation and discussion of these nine reasons why our prayers don't seem to get answered in the king james version this same scripture actually is phrased a little differently it says, ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss. Ye ask amiss. A-M-I-S-S. -S. So what's missing? What is it when we ask amiss? Well, Johnny says that we are amiss when we pray without faith. She says, in other words, when we pray and do not believe in the prayer we prayed, when we do not have absolute faith that what it is we are requesting of God is attainable, possible, already done. When we do not have an understanding faith, you know, basic truth principles in our teachings from Emily Cady tells us there's a difference 
between your understanding faith and faith where you don't know why you're getting the outcomes that you're getting. An understanding faith is a faith that knows for certain that you're working with a spiritual principle and a spiritual law at all times. And when you understand those laws and principles, you can have faith and be certain that what it is you are asking God for is already done. So she says, it's the faith in an absolute good God, not a God that vacillates and changes and is one way one time and another way another time. See, we as metaphysicians understand that God is really principle and principles are unwavering. And so when we ask with unwavering faith, we understand and know it's already done. Point number two. She says, we ask amiss when we pray selfishly. I thought that was a very interesting way to put it. She, she's saying that our prayers are to our Father. When we say our, we're claiming the same thing, not only for ourselves, but for everyone. It's our Father. Yes, it's my Father, it's your Father, but it's our Father. So that means that we cannot be praying for any ill will or harm to any other beings. Really important. She's saying that our relationship with God and the other person's relationship with God are equally the same. Nobody has any more favor with God. We are equally the same. And anytime we are praying to take something away from someone else, we are also pushing that away from ourselves. Because in reality, for real, for real, we're all one, we're all connected, and we are all equal in the mind of God. So we don't want to pray that somebody else is harmed or that someone else is not receiving their good. We want to pray for the highest good of everyone who's involved. Point number three. Johnny tells us that your prayers are not effective until you turn within. This is what she says. You must make contact with the divine in your own consciousness before it can come into expression. You've got to learn how to connect your mind, your conscious mind, to your Christ mind. We've got to practice that. That's why we talk about prayer and meditation as a discipline, so that we learn how to be in the Christ mind. She says, because until you are able to do that, until you make that inner conscious contact with the divine, then the energy cannot flow through you that's required to answer the prayer. You see, answered prayer is about what it is that this universal spiritual energy called God can do through you. 
not for you. God's not doing anything for us. God is in every way a present, equally powerful at all times, energy, and it will move through us and through our situations and through our lives and all of our affairs to the degree that we are in conscious contact, conscious awareness that that power and that energy is available to us wherever it is that we are. I love that point. I love that point. She goes on to say, and it actually builds on the previous point, in point number four, that prayers are not answered because instead of being God-centered, we're problem-centered. We sit down to pray and we take all of our problems. And so in our prayer time, when we are to be connecting our energy, our spirit, our consciousness to that uplifted Christ mind, to the mind of God, we're sitting there using the time going over every problem that we had. God doesn't know a thing about your problems. God only knows the perfection of everything that it has created. And so in prayer time, we want to take the seeming problem and set it aside so that we have a period of time and a space where we can allow God to do God's perfect work where we can learn to recognize and be aware of that that perfect divine presence is perfect and divine regardless of what seems to be going on in the situations and concerns of our life. You see, we don't want to be about telling God all about the problem. It's a useless exercise. We want to be about connecting to the divine, healing, prospering presence and spending as much time as possible in that state of consciousness. It's some work to it. It's simple, but maybe not very easy until you get the practice of consistently doing that. That's why we say, pray without ceasing. Lesson point number five. Johnny says the main reason, this is what she says, one of the main reasons that our prayers are not answered is because we still claim the condition. We still claim the problem once we have gotten up from the prayer. We're still going around. You know what happens. People start getting together and talking and they're talking about the bonkers of the conkers. They're talking about this dis-ease. They're talking about, and constantly claiming that. Even though they are praying that they be relieved of the condition you will not be relieved of a condition that you keep in your consciousness and in your mind and coming out of your mouth all the time. You will not be relieved of it because you're keeping it present by the conversation. And then when you touch and agree with other people, oh yeah, I had that, oh yeah, she had that, he had that, oh yeah, they're dealing with that. You have simply amplified the presence and existence of the very thing you prayed about. That's what she means when she says, you get up and you continue to claim the condition. Let it go, she says. Let it go in the prayer time and let it go when you are in 
any situation, you have to be really mindful and astute. When people begin those conversations, just be still and be quiet. You don't have to contribute to the conversation and say, I had that, I have that, I do that, this is wrong. You have the power of your choice. You don't have to discuss it. And what other people are saying and discussing does not have to affect you. So if you want your prayers answered, then let go of what it is that seems to be a concern or a condition that you would like to be relieved of. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that a wonderful, simple message? And it also causes us to continue to practice mindfulness, to listen to what we are saying when we are talking with others. In lesson point number six, Johnny says prayers are not answered because we do not understand what our true desires are. We ask for the wrong things. And I would say that a part of the main problem is asking for things. You see, what she says is that instead of asking for the real desires of our heart, that we believe those things will produce for us. We're asking for the material thing. And as metaphysicians, we know that material things all have a spiritual origin because they emanate from an idea. And so if we stop trying to get the things, but pray believing that we have that spiritual fulfillment that it represents, then we're on track to have our prayers answered. She talks about the example of praying for a home. And people go out and look for a house or an apartment or a place to live. They look for a physical manifestation. And she says what you're really praying for many times is the fulfillment of something else. Maybe you're really wanting security. Maybe you're really wanting a sacred space and place where you can relax and rest in the presence of God. Maybe what you really want is shelter and protection. She says, pray for what you really want. Really unravel and dig down and go deep into your subconscious mind and ask the question, what is it that this represents for me? What is it that this new relationship would represent for me? What is it that this money substance would represent for me? What is it that this material manifestation represents so that I can pray for the real good desires of my heart. Very powerful and important message. In our lesson point number seven, Johnny tells us that you can pray all that you want, but until you have the consciousness for what it is you are praying for, your prayers are going to seem as if they're not being answered. This is how she says it. Prayers are not answered because we expect an answer before we have the consciousness or the awareness for it. She says you may get it, but you won't keep it until you have the consciousness that vibrates at the same level of that which you are praying. If you have not grown your consciousness 
up to the level of a home where you can be safe and secure and protected and sheltered and have a little sacred space for yourself until you have grown your consciousness to be at one with the Christ mind for those things, it will not manifest. Or, and I've had the experience of this in my life more times than I'd like to admit, where I was able to attain it, but I couldn't hold on to it. I was able to attain having a business without having it credit, without having money, putting together a beautiful deal with other people who had the right background and the right resources and was able to get the owner to, to give us a loan so that we could buy the business. But we did not, and I do say we, we did not have the consciousness. I know I did not. Might not be fair to speak for them, but I know I did not have the consciousness to sustain it. Sustainability comes only from having a consciousness that is established, that is firm, that can endure, that is imperturbable, and that is in right alignment with that for which you are praying. And then it just feels like a natural part of you and it will continue on and on and on. It'll be sustained because you have the consciousness for it. So work on your consciousness, not on getting stuff. All right? Lesson point number eight. Prayers are not answered, Johnny says, because we pray for the effect to be healed. We go to the doctor, get a diagnosis, and we start holding the diagnosis in our mind. And our prayers are for doing something about the diagnosis. She says, our prayers are not answered because we are praying to change the effect of a physical manifestation. We know in new thought and as metaphysicians that what there is to change and shift is the mindset that is behind the real cause. And she points out several of them. The main one, hating. Hating. Going deep down and recognizing that there are things that I'm, I haven't been loving. I've had that experience in the last four years to come to the realization of the number of people that I have not been loving. I don't have to agree with them, but if I'm not loving them, then I have set up a condition in myself. Hate, she says, and I'm paraphrasing her now, is one of the greatest underlying conditions that contributes to the outer manifestation. It's like Mary Tumpkin used to say, our other UFBL leader. She used to always say, it's like looking at yourself in the mirror with a yellow coat on and saying, I want to change to the blue coat and sticking your hand into the mirror and trying to change the coat you have on. You have to go to the real reality of where the coat is in order to change it. You have to go to the mindset and the feeling nature that is producing the outcome in order to shift and change it. Very powerful, powerful prayer thought. So if you've got some fear going on, some low self-esteem going on, some anxiety and worry, 
then those are the things that you'll have to shift and change within before the manifestation of your experiences in your prayers will be like those that you'd like. And finally, number nine. Johnny says prayers are not answered because they're not prayers at all. Prayers are not answered because we think we're praying, but we're really not aware that they are not the prayers that we really think we're praying. She says, it's not about rehearsing and repeating the same things over and over and over again saying the Lord's Prayer and never really listening to what it is saying, just saying it over and over and over again. It's not about begging. It's not about pleading. And it's also not about that you do when everything else failed. You are praying when you have reached the point of silent, quiet communion with that infinite energy intelligence we call almighty, everlasting, eternal, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, omniactive. When we have become still enough to truly feel and know that that presence is right where we are, is right with us. Not when we are chattering in our mind and saying all of these things to God and then never listening, never even listening for what the response is. Sometimes the prayers have been answered and we don't even know they've been answered because we've gone on, we're moving so fast. Prayer requires us to be still and know, I am God. So it works if you work it. And one of the most beautiful things that I think Johnny says in her book and in this chapter is you have the power to change your experiences you have the power to choose your way so what's missing thank you for your consciousness thank you for your prayers thank you for the manifestation that you have created. You see, our collective consciousness has created this ministry called the One God, One Thought Center. And we are all so grateful that we have all desired in our heart a place where we can come and learn. We can come and teach. We can come and practice. We can come and simply be all that God created us to be and then contribute something of ourselves, something of our resources, something of our love. We have created this manifestation through our prayers. And so I want to thank you right now for your prayers, for yourself, for your family, for your community, for this ministry. And I thank you for your gifts and contributions, however and whatever form they may be. Whether it's your prayers of love, whether it's your contributions of your time and your skills and your talents, or the contribution of your money substance that helps to sustain us, to keep the lights on, to pay the mortgage. Whatever it is that you're contributing from your love and your generosity, we thank you. So right now in your mind's eye, regardless of whether or not 
or what form your contribution takes. Imagine yourself holding it in the hands of God. Just imagine it being right there. An abundance of plenty. An abundance of every good desire of your heart being fulfilled. And we say this prayer. And really listen to what it is you are saying. Divine love. through me is blessing and multiplying all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thanks, God. It is done. It is so. And so it is. Amen and amen. Thank you for being with us once again. We go forth now from this place. This place in consciousness. Being the light. We are the light that is lighting up households, neighborhoods institutions, places where people have not come to know and understand these principles of truth that we are teaching. Places where people have not remembered who and what they are. Always in the presence of God. And then we show up, bringing the light. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever I am, God is. And wherever we are, God is. And so it is. Have the most incredible day of your choice. Peace and blessings.